Hello everybody. So in this video, I kind of want to show you a really cool program that I used to use quite a lot. It's definitely something that's great for beginners. It's a macro recorder. I'll go ahead and show that. So here we go. It's called Pullovers Macro Creator and I'm using, using version 5.3.7. So this thing's really cool. It basically just records everything you do on your computer from clicking, moving your mouse, to typing, what have you, or just having an easier way to input functions. You know, there's a lot of times where, even with all the experience I have with auto hotkeys, a lot of times I'll be like, okay, I know I can do this, but I forget the parameters of it. So I'm always Googling stuff. This is a thing that can really help you when you start, but I definitely recommend trying to move away from this eventually and actually learning the code as much as you can just because this records like everything you do from mouse movements and everything so a great example of showing why you should move away from this is something as simple as moving my mouse across the screen like this you know right there i can already see that i've moved my mouse slightly up and down like four or five times it's going to capture each time i do that and that's going to be like you know eight lines of code where if I were to manually program that, I could make it a much cleaner slice with only one or two lines of code. So definitely get away from it eventually because it ends up being much cleaner uh, code. Plus you're learning, so it's a great thing to do, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, right here we got our macro uh, screen right here. I can always add more if I want more. It's basically just that script one, script two there. So this side is going to record the step-by-step. -step or my input of step-by-step. -step. And then on this side of the screen is gonna be the actual auto hotkey code that you're gonna to want to put into, you know, if you compile or just run as an AHK file. So up here we got, you know, the basic stuff, save, save as, whatnot. Don't really need to go through those. The first big thing you're really gonna be looking for is this record button. So that's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that. So I'm gonna push record, it's gonna open up a new window and minimize this one. Uh, a recommendation is with this little drop down, mouse moves is usually, I think, automatically checked when you start the program for the first time. I would remove that just because, like I was showing you with that mouse move, that's going to add so many lines of code that I don't need. The only reason I could see you really needing that is if you're trying to create a macro for a video game. You know, Call of Duty, that mouse movement is what pans your camera, so you might actually need those. But if you don't, I definitely recommend getting rid of that. It's going to make your code so, so much more cleaner and a ton of lines less. So I'm going to push the record. You get this little new box right here that shows you what's going on. Um, and you can, you know, choose which script you want to record at. All the different buttons, you know, play, pause, all that. But then you also get a little message here for the hotkeys. So F9 is just to start and stop. F10 is to start a new uh, record. So I just need F9 here. So I'm going to open up Chrome. And let me make sure that I got that lined up. Let's put that down here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, record this. And I'm just going to use F9 and move this off the screen. All right. So I'm going to push F9. It's now recording. You will get a message box in your bottom right corner, which you can't really see right now. And I'm just going to open up a few tabs. And then I'm just going to cycle back through them. So basically, I'm just doing a bunch of clicks here. And then maybe we'll type in, like, hello. There we go. Music video. And we'll close. And I'm going to go ahead and push F9 again. So let's take a look at that code now. So over here... It's a breakdown of every little thing we got there. So it automatically got a win active. Pause. Down here it shows you the delay. Uh, 5,000 seconds or milliseconds about. So you can double click that and adjust that really easy. Uh, usually you're coding in milliseconds, but you can change seconds, minutes here. Just whatever your uh, variety you're kind of looking for. It also has icons showing, you know, like the mouse that's obviously a click. The pause button's obviously a pause and so on. So yeah, let's, uh, oh, and down here, uh, another reason why I'm saying get away from that code is because as you down see down here, 
it's, you know, I'm saying hello. It's literally doing a send H, send E, send L. That's, you know, four or four more lines, I guess, than it needs to really be. Um, so over here, I don't see the code yet. I just click that refresh key right there. And there's our actual auto hotkey code. So yeah, as you see down here, send H E L L O. I could honestly make this just one line saying send hello and get rid of all those sleeps in between. So yeah, definitely uh, try to move away from this eventually because yeah, it's not very clean code. It just records so much. Now, if I want to actually test this out right up by the record button, we do have the play. There's some other options down here. Never really mess with those. Yep, click out. So if I want to try to test this out, I can push play. And I'm going to go ahead, push play. Oh, I guess I need to close those out. So it's back to its original. And we're going to go ahead and push play on that. And there we go. It's mimicking. Here's my hands. So you know I'm telling the truth. It's the last one. It's going to send hello. And push that enter key for me. So there you go. Pretty uh, simple to do right there. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Now, once you actually write your script and you want to save it, you can just go up here to, well, there's two options, actually. You can go up here to export to AHK. Got up here, just any information where you want to save it, all that, and just push export. And it's just going to save it to your desktop as one of these AHK files for you. Now, let's see what else we got here. So now that was the recording. Now let's say you kind of want to be more manual about it and doing stuff. So up here, the play, that's your hotkey. You can change that to whatever you want by clicking in there and just pushing the corresponding key. So I just push F1. That's pretty much what I use for everything. So as you saw in that last script, which actually let me, let's just put some random stuff in here real quick so you can see. Come on. No, I guess... So as you see in the code over here, you're used to having a hotkey up here. When you're in this program, you're not going to see that. But once you export it, that F1 hotkey will be up there. So just keep that in mind that even though you can't see that, you will see it when you actually have your actual code code. I guess that's a good way to explain it. Now, as far as everything else goes... A lot of the stuff I've covered in a lot of my videos, so if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you know, just check back on some of those in the intro videos especially. But yeah, you can just, if you don't want to do recording, you want to have more control over thing, you can, you know, push the mouse. Really cool, you know, GUI that pops up here with a lot of options. You know, mouse click, what button do I want to push? Left, normal, hold, release, right, middle. And if you have uh, those side keys, X1, X2. Uh, how many times do you want to click? Do you want to click 10 times at once or just, you know, one? Uh, or repeat, that's just going to add your loop for you. Do you want to delay in between? There's so much cool stuff you can do here, including your coordinates manually versus through the record. Uh, yeah, so that's that. See, very easy. Already got that command, and it does the code for me. There's that loop with the click left one, sleep 10 milliseconds. Next, we get the text. So the text is just, you know, put in a whole bunch of stuff in there. You can put enters. It should memorize that stuff, too. Really easy to do. Let's refresh the code. So, yeah, see, it saves even the enters, the tabs, whatever you want in there. And it just does this in raw. That way, if you have any, like, percentages in there, it's not going to mess up thinking it's a variable. Uh, pause. You know, that's just a sleep. You know, how many milliseconds? Do you want it to be randomized? What have you? you? Got the message box. I use message boxes all the time, so I love this very clean GUI here. Type your message up here. Put your title. And this is really cool. 
this is something I always have troubles with when I'm doing message boxes and I want like a yes or no. I'm always trying to remember, you know, is that message box for, you know, what is that? This is a great way to, you know, not have to memorize so much stuff when you're starting out. This will kind of guide you as a learning tool too. You can even do icons. Uh, these are just kind of the basic system icons that come. So, you know, an air, which I think is like the little yellow triangle with the explanation in it. Or maybe that's this one. I don't remember. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. And I'm just going to kind of run through these real quick, not explain them too much. You got a key weight, great menu. These are all very clean, which is great. Uh, window, you know, if you want to move it, maximize, minimize. There's a whole list of stuff here you can do. You know, always on top, that kind of stuff. So then we got the image search, uh, pixel search. This is probably the one thing I used a lot just because I hate using these. Uh, they're just not very reliable, but this definitely helps you a lot, especially with like the color grab and whatnot. Uh, let's see if I can pick something here like green. Can I get the green? Can't tell if I'm on it. So you right click and it grabs the color for you. This is amazing. This is probably the biggest use I've ever got out of this program is being able to make these image search, pixel, pixel search and all that. Then we got, you know, run. You can either copy and paste your target that you want, whether it's a program or a folder. Or you can just click this and you automatically get your uh, explorer here to go ahead and navigate it to it manually. We got a loop, you know, very basic. What do you want to do? Just a basic loop. Uh, what do you like? How many times you're repeating it? How do you want it to break? Do you want it to continue? All that kind of stuff. Like I said, did a lot of videos with this kind of stuff. So. Uh, go to just in case you want to jump to uh, somewhere else in the script we got if statements these are really great uh, there's a whole bunch of different types of if sometimes it can be hard to remember which one specifically you're looking for which then makes it harder to google but you know you can do if window exist you know put the title in here uh, i think you can actually push title here and then click on a window I forget how that works Okay, maybe it's right click, so. Yeah, there we go. So I can just uh, push this and then cl right click on whatever window and it's gonna grab the full name here. And you can add an else. Here's another useful thing. I like this. I did another video where I talked about how to send emails with auto hotkeys. And if you watch that, you'll see that it is a tad bit complicated. It's, I think about maybe around 40 to 50 lines of code and it's some of it's pretty like hard to understand what's going on there this makes it so much simpler you have your body of your paragraph here that you want to write who it's going to if you want to cc bcc anybody uh, the only thing you have to do is set up an email account through here so you just type in what your email is uh, your smtp server uh, number which that you can just google just google you know, Gmail and what that is, what port you're supposed to be using. Also can find that on Google. And then you just need your username and password because it does need to connect to an actual server in order to be able to send that. Uh, because if you didn't, eh, we'd probably get tons more spam mail than we already do because people could send tons and tons of emails without ever getting flagged. So you definitely need that authentication going on there. And you can add multiple accounts. Maybe you want to send... A single email using three of your accounts for some reason you can have it do all of those at once which is really cool uh, and then you can also do attachments that's very helpful how many times do you want this to happen how often do you want it to happen hopefully you're not spamming the crap out of someone and having this like repeat a hundred times every second I think this would delay would be more for kind of like send this email once a day so you guys do the math on that. I don't know how many milliseconds or 24 hours. Definitely a high number. Or you can do seconds to at least kind of cut your uh, number down a little bit there. Download files. You know, where do you want to get that file from? You know, you got Dropbox, that kind of stuff. 
what are the links. So maybe you just need to update some file every day from a website. You know, that's very useful for work for sure. So we got Internet Explorer down here. Fortunately, Chrome isn't really known for using comms. Um, well, actually, it's not at all. Only Internet Explorer is. So Chrome wasn't included in here. I did do another video. It's actually, I think, one of my most popular videos right now on how to use Auto Hotkey with Chrome with an extension. The extension is really easy to use. Uh, you just download it to Chrome and you only need very, very basic JavaScript for it to work. And then after that, it's kind of like this, to be honest, where you kind of collect, click some buttons on what you want it to do. And it actually builds the JavaScript in the background for you. Uh, you just need one or two lines of JavaScript to get going, which I cover in the video on how to do that. So it's real simple. But with that, you know, you can just do uh, a lot of stuff here. You know, if you want to change the height of it, submit buttons, uh, change inner HTML text, so much stuff you can do there with Internet Explorer. But unfortunately for AutoHockey, Internet Explorer has been discontinued and will probably slowly start to uh, get worse and worse over time just because they're not doing any more security updates or anything. So I definitely recommend checking that video out, which I'll put in the description below just start preparing for that uh, move to Chrome. So down here, you kind of got more of like your edit stuff. You know, if I decide I don't want this text here, I can just cut it out. Uh, you can duplicate rows. That way you don't have to re-record something over and over again if you're going to have it going off multiple times. Duplicate selected rows if you want to do like a batch. So many other options that you can do here. But that's pretty much it for this. If you guys have any other questions with this, or maybe there's some way I could go into more detail on here, I don't think I really can with this uh, kind of thing, just because most of my videos cover what's being covered in here that's automatically being done. So I, like I said, please move away from this eventually. It's great for a few things. I still use it a lot of times to do for the emails and the image searches. But after that, I try to stay away from it just because I'm going to have way more cleaner code. And if you're going to share it with someone else who wants to maybe manipulate your code, if you do everything in here and send it over to them, they're going to look at a lot of this code and be like, oh my God, why does he have so many sleeps? Why does he have so many mouse movements? It's insane. Um, so yeah, definitely try to get away from that. I also think you can automatically indent. Yes. So you can highlight your text. And click this right here and it'll automatically uh, what's called beautify your code to make it look like it's supposed to you know with the uh, spacing and whatnot all right guys thank you so much definitely subscribe below L releasing two to three videos hopefully every single week let me know if you guys have any recommendations I got a few recommendations that I already got I'm already planning some videos with those so hopefully you guys who have uh, submitted those I'll be getting to you shortly all right, guys. Have a great Christmas.